conference, Pastor Ed and a crew of his had gone out and they had caught a great white shark and it was incredible. He had formed a lot of his message around that. And so that was the last scene of one of the messages, just pumping us up to go out and to win our world. And so this morning, what we want to do now that we've come back from C3 is we want to share with you some of our greatest takeaways. If you're new to this church and you're like, who are all those people on stage? I'm going to tell you. Here, myself and Brad are your lead pastors. Next to me is Mara and Remy Renfro. These are our student pastors. Next to them is Willie and Courtney Barr. These are our kids pastors. Oftentimes you don't see these guys because they're like in all those kids zones. We have a lot of them. Upstairs, normally hiding out is Pastor Josh and Jana Baser. They're the online campus pastors. All you online people right now, you should be like hooping and hollering online, okay? Put something in the chat that's crazy about those two, okay? Then you've got... Brandon and Brandy, and Brandon is actually back. He's running our AV this morning, but Brandon and Brandy, they are our life group pastors. And next to her is Grant and Stacy Hendricks. Stacy's not with him at the moment, but they are our Connections pastors. And if you know anybody, y'all know Grant, all right? <laughs> Woo-hoo. Well, this morning, we are going to just give each of our pastors an opportunity to share with you one of their greatest takeaways from C3. This is a 48 hour event where we are literally just like a fire hose just poured into. So many speakers all morning long till about one o'clock, just back to back to back. Then in the afternoon, we have app sessions and you can choose what topic you want to go in and hear about. And we have heard from some of the best speakers around the world. And so we're just going to start this morning with Mara. All right, we're just gonna have okay. you. I know, I changed okay. it up. You gotta okay. notice. You gotta notice the time, sister. Okay, I'm like, uh, uh, yeah, that's true. No, sorry. We're just we're <laughs> skipping a little bit that we did in the first service because worship went a little long, which is incredible. Yeah, we'll crazy. always give God a chance to move. So, Mara, tell us what was your greatest takeaway from C3 this year? Um, so, like you said, you could choose what sessions you went to, and honestly, over every single thing I went to, it God just laid this on my heart of like we. Every person is called to share the hope of Jesus with others. Like, it doesn't matter if you're on this stage. It doesn't matter if you are a teacher, if you're a mechanic, if you're a mom. Like, your job is to share the hope of Jesus with others. And it's like God has gifted you with that, and he has a specific circle for you. But the thing is, is we go through life, and we see, you know, we want the whole world to change. And it's like... Are you even speaking to your neighbor about Jesus? Are you even speaking to the person that you see every day about Jesus? If you want to make an impact, like you have to be faithful with the little. And that starts with knowing the gospel and knowing who Jesus is and sharing the truth. And, you know, when we look at John 4, he talks about, um, he's with this woman at the well and he shares the love of Jesus with the truth. And he calls her out and he's like, you know what, actually you've had five husbands. And it's like, man, how many of us are so scared to go and tell somebody the truth and what God's word says Jesus showed us that, and it's like, that's our job. And one thing I want to show you is um, something that I'd encourage you to just take a picture of and memorize this, because a lot of us don't even know how to share the gospel. And it's, it's you know, we sh- or we're like, hey, you have parents that come to kids' ministry, and they're like, well, like, they want to put Jesus in their heart. And you're like, well, you can do it. Like, you can tell them how to do it, right? And so memorize this, take a picture of this, but, like, God created us to be with him. Like, this is the gospel. Our sins separate us from God, and you cannot do just a bunch of good deeds and go to heaven, right? right? Paying the price for sin. Jesus died on the cross and rose three days later for our sin. And everyone who trusts in him alone has eternal life. You have to trust in him. And once you do, then you have life with Jesus now and forever. That is the gospel. It is short and sweet and to the point. You need to know that. You need to go and share that with everybody that you possibly can. And I was thinking about, nobody said this. It's just weird. But this is what I thought, okay? If, you know, about video games, right? Most of us know. And, like, on top of their heads, it's like... Oh, something on there indicating like the bad guys, the good guys, whatever, right? Well, if we happen to be able to see who's going to heaven and who's going to hell above our heads, how many more people would you share the hope of Jesus with? Wow. 
good question. And it's like, if we really, really think about it, like, that's, it's heartbreaking. The fact that we go to Walmart, the fact that we go and we miss all of these opportunities that God has surrounded us with. And it's like, if we would just do it, yeah. like, it's our job to be able to do that. And when we do, if he's going yeah. to trust us with so much more because we trusted him in the little. Yeah. So share the hope of Jesus, trust him in the little things and yeah. make people realize like, you know, drugs, alcohol, pornography, like that's not what can help. Right. Like okay. Jesus and the hope yeah. of Jesus can. Yeah. And when we read John, it's um, 14, 6, it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father. No one can go to heaven yeah. except through him. So okay. share that with people. That's so good. I love that. You know, as Mara is sharing about the video game. What a simple illustration. If, if you could just see above their head to know they're either going to spend eternity in hell or heaven, how would that change how we talk to people? But, you know, I honestly think there is a way that we know, and the Bible says it pretty clearly, and that is you'll know them by their fruit. And so when you're with people and you don't see that fruit, you can have a pretty good indication, even if they go to church or even if they wear a T-shirt that says, I'm a Christian, you have a pretty good idea that they don't understand what a relationship with God is all about. And if they don't have that fruit, and so also believers, remember that that's the number one thing that tells others that you know Jesus is when you walk out of this room, are you producing godly fruit so that the world can see that Jesus lives in you. I love that. I don't think I'll ever forget that little, I just see like this like cloud above white, your head, white. like right now, right? It's like ding, 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 like Mario Brothers. Okay. You're going Remy, to heaven. You're going to heaven. <laughs> Show me some fruit. Okay. Remy, share with us your yeah. greatest takeaway. Yeah. Um, the conference was awesome. Like it was amazing. I've never seen a more diverse group of speakers in one building. This is true. Like, yes. It was insane. And I knew I was at the right place whenever uh, Ed Young, the guy that puts it on, um, let like an eight-foot great white shark mount down from, from the, the ceiling. ceiling. You're right. I'm like, Center yeah, stage. redneck like here. If or, you don't know, Remy yeah. is a Remy is like a guide on the water. So like yeah. fishing was his language. Fishing He's like, hunting. speak to it's, me. Yeah, it's it. It's like he's speaking to me. Okay, <laughs> but before we before we even started day one, the morning of day one. Um, we were in a huddle, and, and you guys were talking about just come expecting, like come expecting to receive, like come to this conference. And so that was, that was pretty much my prayer throughout the whole conference. And, and God, I feel like, really spoke to me, and he told me that we need to get back to the basics. Like no matter how deep the messages were at this conference or like how much they dive into something, it all boils down to basic principles. And I couldn't help but think about Mark 12, um, verse 30 and 31, I believe. And um, they asked Jesus, like, what are the greatest commandments? Mm -hmm. And his answer was simple, yet profound. Yeah. Yeah. He said, love God and love your neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, when it, when it boils down to it, Pretty I, simple. how much better <laughs> does it get than that? And, yeah. and you think about loving God, like, how do I love God? Yeah. Well, I've never, like, loved someone that I didn't have a great relationship with. Yeah, like good. me and Mara wouldn't work out so good if we didn't talk, right? right. We didn't bond, we didn't spend time together, right? Good. So, and it's not just a yeah. Sunday and Wednesday kind of deal, you know, it's a seven days a week, 365, yeah, 24 seven. Amen. Yeah, I mean, like good. church is every day. I mean, love him every day. And then love your neighbor. Like Mara said, like truth is love, you know, so, I mean, we want to send everybody we can to heaven. Yeah, like, amen. we don't want we don't want to leave anybody behind. Yes. And so, if you really love them, you're going to preach the truth to them. Yeah. And it's not going to be fun. Like, it's going to be tough for at times, yeah. Yeah. you know. But we want them to get to heaven. So, that's what it's I take so away. So good, <laughs> so good. And you know, I think about you know even people that I see in this room that we've invited to church over and over and over, almost to the point that at times we would be in town, and Brad would be like, ooh. There they are. And he's like, oh my God, be like. Did you and ever like, see anybody see you guys and like hide? Yes. I'm like, Brad, people are walking away. Like they're hiding around the corner. Can we not be so weird to people? But you know, it was just come like, we're going to get them eventually. We never gave up on just people. Just come to church and I'll stop bothering you. I know, right? He would literally tell people, he really does. There's still people we're working on. He's like, I will quit asking you if you show up one 
time. Yeah. You don't want me to ask you anymore, show up one time. But the fact is, if we didn't love people, we wouldn't keep inviting them to come to the house of God, you know? And if, like, it's so good to memorize the gospel acronym that Mara gave you, that's awesome. But you know, if you're like, man, I just gave my life to Jesus, I'm terrified. Just invite them to church. Grab some invites out there. And like Brandy says, like, hand them off and run. I know that people, <laughs> like, that's weird, but like put it in their hands. Also, I, I remember here a while back, um, Tina, our assistant, was in Walmart in the shoe aisle shopping. And there was an MMC invite in a shoe, like a brand new shoe. Somebody was just like, drop it and just go. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. The fact is you can drop Jesus everywhere you go. And if you don't want to use your words, grab some invites and drop them around your school, drop them around your work. But we got to get the hope of Jesus out there. Amen. Amen. All right. Moving on. Come on. Give God a hand. Remember when you give God a hand, you let your speakers take a break. Okay. All right. Pastor Willie, share with us. What did God really speak to you at this conference? Man, a lot, but but my big thing, um, I love C3 because I get convicted every single time. It doesn't it doesn't matter uh, where I am in life. I'm like, oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to relax, I, I feel but like everything we share, it's because we were convicted. Oh over yeah, it, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> <think> we're perfect. <laughs> there is truth to that. God is like deals with us on areas we need to get better, right? Yeah. yeah. So my big thing, there was a pastor there, Pastor um, Pace, uh, what is it, Hartfield, sorry. Um, and man, ruined me. Um, and so uh, he talked about the micro and the mega. And uh, he talked about being faithful in the micro is mega to God. Um, he said a phrase that it's, it's so impactful in my brain. I, I can't stop thinking about it. Um, he used the phrase, uh, we've all got something, but we don't have anything. Yeah. We don't own anything. Um, he, he passed out these little gold chocolate coins um, before he ever spoke. And he had us do something uh, during uh, his sermon and, and he had us put it in our hand and look at it and say, I've got something, but I don't own anything. Good. And he talked about the fact that God gives us so many things mm-hmm. and he gives us the talents, yeah. but we don't own that. Yeah. That's yeah. not ours. That is what God is entrusting us with yeah. to do something with. Yeah. And he talked about being faithful in that. Yeah. And, and even though you, it may be in your hand and you've got possession of it as of right now, you have to be faithful in it. You have to do something with it. And that is being mega with something that is micro. Yeah. Yeah. And I... It hit me so hard because I can become so selfish with my things, right? Oh, that's, that's my kid's ministry. That, that's my room back there. Like we're doing so much great things back in my room. And God hit me and said, no, yeah, like that's not yours. Yeah. That is mine that yeah. you get to come alongside me yeah. with and make a mega oh, difference. That's good. Man, it... It hits you so hard that yes, we have it, but we don't own it, so. That's so good, and and to be faithful. You know, a lot of times, especially with social media today, it's really easy to be scrolling and just compare yourself to someone else, what you have with what someone else has. And God never told you that you needed to be faithful with what someone else had. That's between them and God. God simply says, I've given you a portion. I've given you a something. They were preaching from the talents and one had one, one had two, one had five. Every one of them had something different. And we don't need to compare ourselves to one another. We just need to be faithful in whatever that something is God gave us. So, so good. All right, Pastor Courtney, what really stood out to you? Well, one of the things I really love is when we have multiple speakers and you can tell that as a group of leaders that God has really poured to them something that we all need to hear because we hear it multiple times, you know, and it's from speakers that didn't collaborate together on what they were speaking. And so Pace had kind of, you know, like Willie talked about, talked about 
doing something with what God has given you. And one of the things that he said towards the end, he said, God will give you the gift, but you have to bring the grit. And so God's going to give you gifts and talents and he's going to put good. passions in your heart, yeah. but you have to put action to that. Like those passions aren't just going to fulfill themselves yeah. and God has given you the talent to do it, but you're going to have to do it. Yeah. You're going to have to get up and put action to that. And it's not always going to be easy, but there are so many things that you learn along the way when you put the grit behind the gift that God's placed in you. And so just really being faithful with that. And so then next Sam Kelly came up and he basically, basically just piggybacked off of that message and really like reinforce some of those same things. And I always love listening to Sam Kelly because he's so practical and like, it's so basic, but so applicable for me. And so one of the things he said is he said, we may not be able to do everything, but we can all do something, right? And so my something that God's calling me to do might not be or seem like it's as big of an impact as somebody else. Like I might be like, man, I really wish I had their talent or I really, really wish I had their resources or whatever. Like I can't do what they can do. So I'm just going to sit and pout about the fact that I can't do what they can do. And that's not what God's calling us to do. Like he's saying, get your something and go do do it, right? Because we all have something and we have to do what he's called us to do. And so, you know, he said like, do your something and do it faithfully. And so whatever that something is, don't sit in that comparison trap and not do what God's called you to do because there are people in your circle. There are people at your job. There are kids around you. There are family members that you may speak to that we may never speak to. We may never have that relationship with, and God is calling you to be that impact. So take the something that God gave you and do something with it faithfully and don't give up on that because God's given that to you, not to us, to you. And each one of us have something. That's so good. You know, I think that sometimes when people speak, you can kind of tell what area of ministry they might be passionate about because Cora is a kid's pastor and uh, a teacher. And so when she says pout, I just think, you know what? That is something. You all need to write down, like quit pouting and do something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes we whine that we aren't good enough or we mess up or we do this or we do that. It's like quit pouting and do something. I'm going to write that down. That's good. One of the things that I had on the back of my card, it said discipleship is way less about the words you say and way more about the life you live. Your actions are speaking way louder than anything that you could ever ever say to the people that you are around each and every day. So live out what God has placed inside of you. Do everything that you can with the something and the dream that God's placed inside of you and live out that discipleship. Be a disciple for Jesus in whatever place he's put you in with the resources and the calling and the passions that he's given you. Be a good disciple of that. That's so good. All right, Pastor Josh, you're up. Uh, What did you take away? uh, First shout out to my online family. We love you. So... um, (laughs) So piggybacking a little bit off of hers, you know, she talked a little bit about comparison and, um, you know, that's just a trap that is so easy to fall in. You begin to compare yourself to other people and then discouragement hits in and pastor Ed taught about, um, really, really in your thoughts. And, um, so whether your thought is, is envy or whether your thought is discouragement or lust or whatever it is, when that thought gets out there, you got to set the hook in it and you got to begin to reel that sucker back in so it doesn't begin to control your life. And it's so much easier to deal. He, he compared them to sharks. It's so much easier to deal with a little shark than a big shark. You know, I don't know about you, but when he dropped that big old great white behind him, I was, that's not something I would want to handle by myself. <laughs> But when that shark was a little baby, yeah. I probably could have handled that shark. Yeah. And if I begin to, to reel that thing in when it's little and begin to, to set it in, in order to what the word of God yeah. says, everything changes. You know, Romans 12, two tells us not to conform to this world, but to be transformed yeah. by renewing our mind. We do that by getting the word of God in us more and more and more. And then we see who he is more and more and more. And we also yeah. see who we are in him more and more and more. And so, Good. amen. So we got to set the hook in those thoughts and reel those suckers back in. Um, 2 Corinthians uh, 10.5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take it captive, every thought, to make it obedient to Christ. That's what we're doing when we begin to release thoughts and we're like, no, that's not God's thought. That's not what he has for me. God, what God has for me is what he's been speaking to me through his word, and that's who I really am who I really am. And so, um, so 
If you need to get in the word of God more, one of the best ways you can do that is to jump on the U version plan that we're doing and just go ahead and set MMC as your church and then you'll always know the plan that we're involved in. We have one going every day, all year long. Yeah, which is incredible. I just want to jump in and this just was something that just popped in my heart. You know, if you're not reeling in those thoughts and you're not dealing with that small shark, like Josh said, if you're not dealing with it, you're feeding the shark. So you're either addressing the shark or you're feeding it. And you can't, you can't do both. So either reel that thought in and, and take care of it. Otherwise you're dwelling on it and you're feeding it and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So you either got to reel it in and line it up with the word of God and stop feeding the shark that's growing bigger in your life. You're not the shark. You're not to be the shark's lunch. That's right. You know, one of the things that um, Pastor Ed talked about in that is that we have 60,000 thoughts per day and 75% of them are negative. Think about that. Of all the thoughts that come through your mind that the enemy plants there, the things that you've watched, things that you've taken in, 75% are negative. You know, it's so easy even I think about all the content that comes in through the radio or through, you know, something you're listening to and you think it's just background and it doesn't affect you. Have you ever been driving down the road and something comes on the radio and you like start to feel different? Like literally, you're just like, what is this? And I do that with my kids sometimes. You know, like I don't, we like different genres of music, but there comes a point where I'm like, what is this? Like off it goes. Like, I don't like the way I feel right now. We're going to change that channel. And sometimes it's that way with your thoughts. You're like, what am I taking in that's making me feel? Do I not have peace? Change the channel. Get that thought reeled in. Figure out what's doing that. Because I promise the word of God going in does not make you feel that way. All right? Amen. All right, Miss Jana, you're up. Okay. Um, A worship leader said, when we become workers of Jesus instead of followers of Jesus, we're on dangerous ground. And I love how Courtney reminded us that we have work to do, but um, it's such a great call to watch our motivation. And I loved how in the Build to Last breakout session, they quoted Charles Spurgeon, who said, it takes me six days to prepare my heart and one day to prepare my message. Um, And it it made me think of Proverbs 16 too. People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. And, you know, for me, I'm a recovering people pleaser. And so I, (laughs) so I I do, I have to check that motive and just say, am I doing this because I think this is what everybody else wants me to do? Or what does God want me to do? And we just, we aren't going to church, reading our Bible or serving just to check a box instead of that we've got to check our hearts. We've got to just pursue that real relationship with God and schedule in daily time so that he can reveal, you know, our motivations to us. That's really good. It's really, really good. You can give God a hand. You know, I think about, as Remy talked about getting back to the basics and when you love God, when you really, really love God, everything that you do as a result of that, doesn't feel like work. You know, in a relationship, when you love your spouse and you do something for them, I don't check a box off because I did something for Brad. I love Brad, and so I'm happy to serve Brad. And when you, the closer you get to God, the more excited you are. It's like, you can't get enough. You're like, I wanna do more. I wanna do more. God, use me more. And you start thinking about the fact that the God of the universe, he could speak audibly to each and every person. He could speak through that burning bush. He could do something miraculous. But most of the time, he chooses to use us, imperfect people, and he says, you're going to be my mouthpiece. Think about that. I mean, that is so humbling to realize that God chooses you, but the closer you get in that relationship with him, the more you're going to just take joy in being used. All right, Miss Brandy. So um, I was in an afternoon uh, breakout app, uh, and our incredible pastors got to lead that uh, app session this time, and so that was awesome to see that Mountain Movers was speaking into the lives of, of a conference in, uh, in that kind of style. And so just to kind of see the transparency that they brought in that app, just it was just so refreshing and so um, just amazing to see because it, I think it's the transparency that's really kind of like changed our lives. I mean, I'll be honest, I love to, love to hear that because, you know, we can't measure up to perfection, but we can say, you know what, we're all in this together and this is how God is helping me. And so that was incredible to see their leadership come alive in that, that breakout. But the breakout was called uh, Thriving 5 to 9. And one of the things that I kind of really wrote down and really took from is, is guys, we have control of our schedules. You know, we can make time for our family. 
You know, it's like we live in a rat race society and it kind of dictates of what we decide we can do. And that's not true. You set the pace. You set the tone of your home. You set the, the, you have to lay down some ground rules and it takes a lot of work. And sometimes it, there's never going to be balance, but there is going to be strategy and you're going to have to decide in every season what that looks like for you. Um, yeah, that's really good. Cause I think more of us need to get bold about that and say, this family is important to me and I'm going to make time for it, you know, because we can, we can live a rat race life and miss what's most important. And that really spoke to me, but also just having joy in the journey. You know, I think uh, one of the things is we got to learn to laugh more. We got to learn to laugh more. You know, uh, we got home last night and I just, you know, you kind of like feel all the laundry pressure and just the stuff. And we were getting ready for Sunday because Sunday's always coming. And it's just like, you know, you can kind of feel that on your chest a little bit. And whatever that looks like for you, you know, you can kind of just feel that, that weight or that pressure that the enemy just tries to lay on you and just squeeze you to death, you know. And I just think that, you know, uh, my husband just walked by me and started laughing about something, said something funny. My husband's really funny, but he just started laughing. He wasn't laughing at me. He was just laughing. And I was just like, yeah, you're right. And I just, I thought about a child's laughter and I was like, there's something so life-giving about a child's laugh. When you listen to a child laugh, you just can't hardly, like if you engage in that moment, you just can't hardly be down. I mean, it just like lifts up your spirit. And so, I'm, so I just, I think we got to learn to laugh more and uh, not take ourselves so seriously. Because I think we take ourselves so seriously. And I, you know, there's a, there's a place and time to be serious. Don't get me wrong. You know, we don't wing it around here. But in the same sense, it's like, I think we take ourselves too seriously. And I don't think we take God serious enough. And I want that to really sink in with you because I heard something else at the conference and it said that uh, basically God's gonna do his work. God's gonna use his Holy Spirit and he's gonna go before you and he's gonna do his work. And so a lot of times, you know, we get up all in our head thinking, oh, we can't invite that person to church, you know, like I don't wanna bother them or I don't wanna look like an idiot or whatever. And it's just like, you don't understand that the Holy Spirit has already gone before you. And the reason you have that on your heart to go and invite them is because God wants them to accept it. He's already ready for them to accept it. He's been working on them all week long. And all you have to do is open up your mouth. Psalms 8310, don't quote me on that because I didn't look it up, but it, I just remember, God says, open wide your mouth and I'll fill it. Yeah. And so sometimes we just got to be ready to just open wide our mouth and just share the hope that we have as, as believers, you know? I think sometimes we get so pressed down from life that we forget we've got the hope of the world yeah. in our lives. Amen. You know, we've got the joy and we've got the peace. And sometimes you got to get over yourself yeah. and stop being so serious. Stop, stop overthinking things so much and just open up your mouth and speak it. Okay. You know, and there was another uh, speaker at the conference, Nathan uh, Finaccio. Yeah. Did I get that right? Yes. Anyway, does not look like a theologian, but the guy is super smart. I mean, like brain power smart. I'm telling you what, it was just so incredible to sit in him because he literally sat in a chair with his laptop and just spoke. And it was just like, you couldn't write fast enough. I stopped writing because I was like, just listening. But one of the things that he spoke, um, kind of lost my train of thought thinking about just how incredible he was. Um, thank you. He said, thank you so much. <laughs> He said, uh, clarity is kindness, yeah. you know, and sometimes, especially in our culture, we're, we're afraid of what we should say. And that just really spoke to me. You know, they were dealing with the hard topics of like, you know, gender, you know, bias and all of these different things. And he said, Hey guys, clarity is kindness, right. you know, and sometimes we forget that because guys, we have a yeah. world full of lies. Yeah. And, you know, you just don't know who really knows the truth and who doesn't. You know, we're not in the generation that grew up to know that God is the only way. Right, yeah. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except through Christ. Not everybody knows that. And, guys, we got to get over our, our thoughts and get over what God has put in us. And you just got to open up your mouth and speak clarity. Speak the truth of what God lays on your heart. Amen. It's good. I'm glad you're clapping about that because I'm telling you what, God's going to do his work. God's Holy Spirit sometimes is already at work in somebody and has already been dealing with their hearts on something. And sometimes when God tells you to speak something hard, speak something truth, it's, it's because God's already been dealing with their heart. And he's saying, I just need you to speak it out of your mouth so they can know that it's really me saying it, that they need to just have a confirmation that yes, this is what I need to do, or yes, I need to align my life, or yeah, I'm screwing it up. Yeah, I know. And sometimes you gotta have that a love enough for somebody. And guys, I'm telling you what, when you speak kindness, it's because you love them. 
It's because you love them so much, you don't want to see them destroy their lives. And so sometimes clarity is kindness. So just be bold and be brave. Open your mouth and just get out there and do it. Yeah. So good. You know, it's so funny how we can judge other people just at a glance, right? Go back to that picture of Nathan, if you will, for just a moment. Okay, Nathan truly walks out looking like he's homeless. This is how he always like he looks, okay? Had a bath like in he a week. hasn't had a shower in a week. <laughs> he is the president of a seminary. Dude, he's brilliant. And he truly sat brilliant. down with his laptop and, and theologically tore apart the word of God. And I think it's hilarious because we feel as believers, like, you know, like we look at people and we're real quick if we're not careful to judge. And we should never do that because we don't judge from the outside. God looks at the heart and so should we. We judge by the fruit, not by the appearance. And I just want to preface what, what Courtney said there because, you know, Nathan didn't feel the pressure of taking on somebody else's identity. No, he did not. He spoke <laughs> in his will well. Yeah. He spoke with his confidence level. Yeah. He spoke and just was funny. Oh, yeah. But he didn't try to be Ed Young. He didn't try yep. to bring out the theatrics. And I think that's freedom for some of us. Guys, don't try to be somebody else. Yep. Like, so God didn't anoint you for that. Yep. Just be, be you because you need to be you. Yeah. That's right. There's only one you. You need to be it. And there's only one Definitely Pastor Grant. One Grant. We're going to end on that. There's only one Pastor Grant. All right. You wrap it up, Grant. All right. Well, I've been working on taking myself serious. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but you, you know what? My takeaway from this conference is different than it was the first service because I've thought more about it. <laughs> there, you think about a room full of thousands of people and I've always thought, you know, mega church is just all about people. It's not about God. But I tell you what, you come to this conference and you are going to hear God preached yeah. from the platform. It's just like we hear it from here. And I absolutely love that. But you know what? I'm all about connecting with people. We had such a good time. I got to rub shoulders with people from 10 months old to 80 months old. I had good conversations with people that, that I don't, I wouldn't have here in the, uh, in the, in the lobby, but, uh, <laughs> maybe I would, <laughs> but, uh, the last night of the conference is usually a big church service, but this year they said, meet with your teams. And they was expecting, you know, people to bring 5, 10, 15, 20. Well, we had 103 people to get together. So guess what? <laughs> Most of us went bowling yeah. together. And you want to talk about a good time. I tell you what, there's nothing like rubbing shoulders with fellow believers, yeah. making new friends. Uh, I actually have met a woman that comes to church here. She's probably been here three, four, five times. And I finally heard her speak down in Dallas. Wow. And she knows who she is and she's smiling. <laughs> it's awesome. You know, that's one of the things we push so hard is that when you get away and you allow yourself to be distraction-free, not only will you hear from God, but you also will get to know some incredible people. And that as pastors, that's one of the things that we love the most is being able to spend some downtime when we are not the ones in charge, um, when we're not the ones with all the tight agenda and we can honestly get to know. And so many of you, we know you better because you took the time to go with us. And so I just want to say thank you. We you put your hands together. Give your pastoral team a hand. They did a great job today.